Today we're working on a 2005 Volkswagen Jetta. It's got a 1.9 liter BEW TDI engine and the customer's concern is lack of power. And they've been to another shop and the other shop has made some checks. Uh, this is not a Volkswagen specialty shop nor a shop that is experienced in diesels at all. But um, they gave him an estimate of $2,000 and he didn't have a lot of faith that that was going to fix it. He kind of said that if it was going to be a $2,000 repair, he'd probably replace the car. So he's very concerned that the diagnosis needs to be the right diagnosis and that uh, uh, the price needs to be right to fix this car because he doesn't want to invest that much money in it. So let's start by scanning for some trouble codes and then we'll go drive it. Okay, here's the auto scan from this car. Uh, and we have one fault. PO299, boost pressure regulation, control range not meet, reached. That means there's an under boost problem. We'll go drive the car and take some graphs. Okay, I just got back from the road test and we're uh, flooring it during this situation. We do a wide open throttle pull. Computer commands boost up to this level. It's making no boost whatsoever. Zero, none. In order to diagnose a boost problem, we'd normally make some back vacuum checks here in this area, but on a BEW, the solenoids behind this bracket, that makes it kind of difficult. So we're just gonna go underneath the car and make those checks at the uh, turbo actuator itself. Okay, we're under the car checking the turbo actuator and we're gonna pump it up with vacuum to see if it holds vacuum. Putting on our vacuum pump here. There we go. And then we'll pump it up and see if the turbo actuator moves. Actually, that isn't holding vacuum at all. Still hooked up good. Not holding vacuum at all. And you kind of look at the rod there and see if it moves as I'm pumping it. And it just barely seems to be jarring it just a little bit as I pump. I'm going to pump like mad, see if it moves at all. Doesn't move at all. Now, this might need a turbo actuator, but just to be diligent, we're going to go ahead and pull the intake pipe off the turbo and look inside to verify the condition of the turbo. And uh, then we'll go from there. Because this thing was making no boost at all. Okay, we pulled the intake pipe off the intake side of this turbo. And as you can see, the tips of the impeller are all damaged. Uh, this... That, that damage is relatively minor on the tips there, but I've stuck my finger up in there and this turbo will not rotate at all. And you can see right there, there's a piece of metal and it's stuck between the fins and the body of the housing and it's jamming up that turbo. Um, that turbo will not rotate and we're gonna have to recommend a, a new turbo to the customer. A new turbo has arrived. I've put vacuum on it and pumped it up. The veins move nice and free. I've inspected the turbine and the impeller. Okay, here's the turbo we pulled off the car. I didn't get a real good look at it uh, because it was in the car. We couldn't see much. <clears throat> but in there you can see right across the edge there is a piece of metal and this thing will not spin. I'm reaching back at the turbine and trying to spin it and it's not spinning at all. Let me stick something down in there and maybe verify a little bit better for you to see. As I'm pushing that, it won't spin. Turbo not spinning doesn't generally make any boost. Just got back from the road test on this Jetta that had the seized up turbo. Turbo wouldn't spin. And uh, this is the boost we have now. Boost comes up, overshoots a little, comes under control. So that good boost control and uh, didn't trigger any trouble codes. If you uh, learned anything in this video or enjoyed it, be sure and click the like button. On this Jetta wagon with the low power issue, I just wanted to show the recommendation of the previous shop. And here's what they here's what they noted here. There was a cam sensor trouble code. They cleared it and it didn't reoccur. And they removed the EGR valve and there was a lot of carbon buildup in the intake and EGR. And they test drove and watched the mass airflow and boost pressures. Mass airflow should be blah, blah, blah. Um, so they're saying the mass airflow sensor will cause this, but the intake is choked down, can also, with carbon, can also contribute. Recommend removing the intake and send it out to be decarboned. May have to replace the EGR valve, and they're recommending replacing the mass airflow sensor retest afterwards. 
Now they charged them $165 for this diagnosis, and um, this wouldn't have fixed the car at all. Um, <laughs> Now, the customer was really concerned about the EGR valve being, and I'm very familiar with these, they always carbon up, and we did pull it out and uh, clean the carbon off of it. We didn't show that on, on video, but we did that completely after this job was repaired. Uh, I mean, how, the, the customer was just really concerned that it says it'd be choked down with carbon. The intake wasn't really that carboned up, just the EGR valve. I've showed some of them like that before in my videos. And um, my point is that I'm not going to name the shop, but they charged them this for this information, and the problem was a seized turbo. Why do people take their cars to somebody who don't know the vehicle? I, it, it just doesn't make any sense. If you have a specialty car like a Volkswagen Turbo Diesel, don't take it to somebody who don't know Volkswagen Turbo Diesels. This just doesn't make sense. That's $165 down the tubes, and if he had done this repair, this, this, this shop was estimating $2,000 for this repair, what are they going to do afterwards when the turbo's still bad and, that doesn't, and it didn't fix it? They're going to charge you for a turbo also? That would be terrible. By the way, my total price, putting a used turbo on it, was half of their estimate to do an intake cleaning, EGR, and mass airflow sensor. If you want to contribute to the continued production of these videos, visit my website at www.kansasitytdi.com. If you want to watch some more of my videos, there'll be one right there. Or maybe watch this one right here. And don't forget to subscribe.